kailangan nyo ng pera? At meron kayong mga pinakatatagong mga bagay na antiko at hindi na kailangan? Kayo ang hanap ng ilang mga dayuhang narito ngayon sa Pilipinas na ang Pakay Hidden Treasures. Sinong mag-aasalang ang maliit na kwartong ito? Naglalaman pala ng mga tagong yaman ng Pilipinas. Katulad na lang ng mga pinilakang kupita, mga baso at mga gamit sa kusina na mula pa noong 1800 libo-libong mga barya mula 1906 hanggang 1946. Mga lumang relo na ang tanda, mahigit dalawang daang taon na. Treasure chest na kapag binuksan, naglalaman ng sangkatutak na gintot pila. Ang lahat ng ito nabili ng The Great Canadian Roadshow. Sa mahigit isang buwan nilang pamamalagi rito sa Pilipinas, ang lahat ng mga antigong kanilang nabili, umabot na ang halaga ng mahigit labing dalawang milyong piso. At para tulungan sila sa pagtiyak ng value ng isang gamit, nag-hire sila ng appraisers, sina Erin at Vanessa. I'm Erin O'Reilly, and this is our appraisal room. I work here with my boss, Vanessa. Everything in here has a story and a price. One thing I've learned after 25 years, you never know what is going to come through that door. Taong 2009, nung inumpisahan ito, ni na Boris at Terry, pareho silang pickers kung tawagin o yung mga nagbabahay-bahay para bumili ng mga antique. So what we do is we do some research on it. We um, see if any collectors interested in it, and if they are, we take some pictures of it. It's sort of like matchmaker. It's the best way to explain it. If you bring in your item, we'll take a look to see if we have someone that's willing to buy it. Nitong nakaraang sabado, naabutan namin ang kanilang pakikipagtransaksyon sa isang hotel sa Ortigas. Isa sa mga nauna nilang kliyente, si James na nanggaling pa ng Davao City. Sa bit-bit niyang dalawang daang lumang barya, umaasa siyang makakapag-uwi ng 20,000 pesos. The coins is not for me. I don't own the coin, so my aunt is parang gusto niya na lang ba? So ako na lang nagrepresent for her here, na sa coins niya. One way to know if your coins are real is certain coins they should weigh a certain amount of grams. So this one, for instance, the 1908, it should weigh 20.1 grams. So I'm gonna put that on the scale, and there you go, 21.1 grams. So we know that that one is okay. Matapos suriin ni Vanessa na lamang ang mga baryang ito kasama sa US-Philippine series na ginawa mula taong 1908 hanggang 1946. Mahigit sa 70% ng mga ito gawa raw sa purong pilak o silver. Bibihira lang daw ang mga ito at dahil tumaas na ang halaga ng silver sa merkado, ipinabalik ng Amerika ang mga baryang ito sa kanila para doon tunawin. Sa kasamaang palad, marami sa mga baryang inilayag pabalik ng Amerika na lubog sa dagat. Also, many of them were damaged um, from the sea when uh, Japan invaded the Philippines. Maya-maya pa. Prinesyohan na ito ni Vanessa. I'm actually really surprised uh, with how much you're getting and I'm really happy to help you. And all of your stuff here today is worth 92,000 pesos. Really? Yes. Uh, Isn't that amazing? Yeah, amazing. So you're excited, are you? Do you think your aunt will be happy? She will be satisfied. You think she'll be digging? Jessie, parang nanalo ng jackpot. All right, we're very happy to help you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. Sa timbangan lang daw nagkakasukatan kung peke o hindi ang barya. Pero nung una nilang nasilayan ang baryang ito, sigurado raw silang ito'y orig. Ang 
5,000 peso commemorative coin sa ikalimang taong anibersaryo ng bagong lipunan ni dating Presidente Ferdinand Marcos. Nakaukit ang mukha rito ng dating Pangulo at ng kanyang asawa, si First Lady Imelda Marcos. At gawa ito sa ginto. Ang halaga raw nito ngayon, tumataginting na 150,000 pesos. It's a 22 karat coin that weighs 68.74 grams and the gentleman did not know how much it was actually worth. Pero hindi lahat ng nagpupunta rito gusto lang kumita. Ang 63 anyos na si Mang Mike gusto raw malaman ang totoong halaga ng bakal na cash register na ipinamana pa sa kanya ng kanyang ama. Presidente ng kumpanyang National Cash Register noong 1960 sa Pilipinas, ang ama ni Mang Mike. Kaya nila nakuha ang cash register na ito. He bought it in the States. 1830 o 1803 cash register. Ang mga nakaukit daw na numero sa cash register ang makapagsasabi kung gaano na ito katanda. 317 means that it's a model 300 uh, and the uh, model number up at the very top the registration number actually tells us that it was made um, at that time in 1913 what we have here now as well is we've got it and it's made out of brass at dahil hindi nalalangisan mahirap na raw mapindot ang mga numero it's in a little bit of <laughs> it's in a little bit of uh, rough shape Kadalasan, sa mga tindahan ng candy o sigarilyo ito, makikita dati. Ang kagandahan pa nito, inirelease ang cash register na ito para lang daw sa Pilipinas. Patunay rito ang peso sign na umaangat. It was probably only approximately a grade 4, which would mean that he'd have to do significant refurbishment of it to enable him to get the money that he could get out of it. Kaya ang hatol na presyo sa dala niyang cash register. With the grade 4, you're looking somewhere between 300 to 400 dollars US. Umaasa naman si Mang Mike na mas malaki ang kikitain niya sa portrait na ito na obra maestra raw ng isa sa pinakatanyag na pintor ng Pilipinas. Naghanap sila yung magpipinto, magpipintura nun. Ang kinuha nila si Amor Solo. Para mapatunayan kung si Fernando Amor Solo nga ang may likha nito, tinawag nila Vanessa at Erin si Rowie, isang Pinoy appraiser. Itong dala niyang painting nito, kung talagang amor solo to, wow, talagang this must be worth hundreds of thousands or if not millions. Bago bigyan ng katumbas itong halaga, sinuri muna ni Rowie ang painting. Oil painting siya because uh, masasabi ko po sa pagka-brush strokes na ginamit saka sa pag-mimix uh, ng kulay. Sa simula pa lang ng pag-inspeksyon, kapuna-puna. Amor solo nga ang nakapirma sa kaliwang bahagi nito. Pero hindi ang maestro na si Fernando, kundi si Pedro Amor solo. Hindi po namin mabibigyan siya ng katumbas sa halaga sa halaga. Yun lang na alam ko, ilan narinig ko Amor solo ang gumawa. I don't know, because that painting right now is just in the office in my house. And, and sitting down in the chair, I can see it looking at me. <laughs> Samantala, nung araw ding yun, nagbaka sakali rin na maibenta ng 50 anos na si Raul ang kanyang vintage sewing machine. Kinilatis ito agad ni Erin. And this plate here at the front is quite special actually because the plate on this front here is not one that you'd usually see. You would actually usually see one that didn't actually have as much etching in there, so it was usually much plainer. On the covering here as well, which you can lift it up to make sure that you can get in here for the oiling. Okay, so you can do that there. And the other nice thing about this one lifts up. So this lifts up so that you can also use this for a little bit of storage area and as well so that you can get at this and it's easier to maintain it. Sa una pa lang, mukhang interesado na si Erin sa makina. It's actually still in working condition. 
taliwas sa akala ni Raul. 1950s pa pala ang makinang ito. Halos isang daang taon na ang tanda. Actually was made in 1926, believe it or not. I can believe yeah. And uh, it was very, very, uh, it's, it's actually highly collectible. The ladies looked at sewing as a prestigious thing to do. They also had um, ones that were non-electric, so they were a hand trundle, which is, this is the type that he's brought in. And the reason for that was because of the power um, supply that was not actually available at this time, especially here in the Philippines. All in all, you're looking at uh, probably about $100 uh, US. I was thinking something like $300. It's way below my expectations. Kaya si Raul, may nabuting huwag na muna itong ibenta. Hindi lahat ng kayamanan, nababalot lang sa ginto at sila. May ilan na kapag binalikan ang ginintuan nitong nakaraan. Matutuklasan na ang tunay nitong halaga, higit pa sa anumang ginto.